best stand behind you. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> now, am I looking at you, though? Look at the camera. Yeah. Talk, to the, talk to our online audience. All right. Hi, this is Marcus Schneck for PenLive.com. I'm at uh, Stover's Dam Park in, North, in Lebanon County with uh, Jack Hubley. Uh, many of you might uh, remember Jack from his uh, shows on WGAL. And uh, more, he, more recently, he's been doing uh, live backyard wildlife uh, pro programs for uh, you, places like Stover's Dam. He was here at the Nature Barn doing a program <coughs> just a little earlier. And he also uh, runs something out at uh, the Hotel Hershey. I'll let Jack, you, t mm. you tell them about that. <laughs> yeah, Marcus, we do a, uh, something called the Falconry Experience uh, at Hershey for Hershey Entertainment and Resorts. And we uh, take you down on the field. We give you a, a little lecture on uh, the ancient craft of falconry. And then a short course. And after that, we let you put a glove on and actually call a hawk to your gloved hand. It's the only program of its kind in Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, re refresh my memory about your shows that you had on WGAL. Well, there were three half-hour shows, Marcus, in the course of... Uh, 30 years, uh, and uh, one was a syndicated show called Wild Moments, and that aired on 140 markets nationwide, mm -hmm. including all the top 20 markets, as a matter of fact. Uh, that was four years running, but I was on WGAL for a total of 30 years with dating back to Call of the Outdoors, uh, the armchair sportsman show that was uh, created by Harry Alleman in 1955. And uh, then I also, probably best known for wild, my wild moment segments on the news, on WGAL on Friday on the 530 News, when we did a Q&A on native wildlife and people sent in questions and, and then we tried to answer them on air. Okay, but we're here today to talk specifically about mm -hmm. snakes because there's been a lot of interest in snakes this year with uh, the uh, incidents north of Harrisburg with rattlesnakes showing up in residential <laughs> developments and... Uh, uh, in golf courses. Um, we don't have a rattlesnake here with us today, but we do have a black rat snake, which <laughs> actually can grow to the longest length of any snake in Pennsylvania, over 100 inches these guys can get. Uh -huh. Now, yeah. the snake you have with <clears throat> us today, you've had for how many years, Jack? Oh, this one, I think it's uh, five or six now, Marcus, yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and he, we believe it's a he, is how long? This guy, it's about my length, about six feet long. Yeah, he's an adult, fully adult. I, he's at least 15, 16 years old now. Okay. And, and what, what kind of age expectancy might we see in a snake, uh, you know, under captive conditions where it isn't being preyed on by everything out there, oh, including I, man? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, there's not a lot of mortality factors at my house. Right. And uh, I would say... Uh, uh, I'm expecting mid twenties out of this guy. I mean, you know, I hand him his rats, so there's no, uh, and they're, and they're dead at the time. So, uh, he doesn't have a lot of hazards to deal with. Right. Um, and if I remember right, this guy encountering a rattlesnake would eat the rattlesnake. No, no, no. I have the wrong one. Is that yeah. the black racer? Well, racers do eat other snakes. Oh. And I think, I think that maybe where some of that comes from, uh, actually, rat snakes uh, can often be found in dens with rattlesnakes, and garter snakes will will den cohabitate over the winter. So, but but there are some snakes that do eat venomous snakes, like uh, milk snakes eat other snakes, king snakes, which king snake. aren't native here. Uh, but any any snake with the prefix king, uh, king cobra, uh, consume other snakes. Uh, but these guys are. T for the most part, rodent eaters and, of course, some birds, they're good tree climbers, so that gets them in trouble when they eat uh, young birds in the nest, but that's how nature works. Right. And probably <clears throat> these guys get in trouble on farms occasionally, particularly around <laughs> chickens. Well, yeah. Well, they, they will eat eggs, uh, and, they, and they will kill, uh, uh, I, obviously, can consume a, a small chicken or a quail. Uh, so, yeah, they can get in, in trouble uh, but you have to remember that they more than offset that uh, as a rodent control agent. Just remember the name rat snake. Yeah, snakes have a, a very negative image <laughs> in, our, in yeah. our society with many yeah. people. Um, I see on uh, Facebook and on Twitter people taking great pride in bragging about the snakes they killed or the snakes mm. they would like to kill. Um, 
there's very few instances where a snake actually needs to be killed. Very, very few, Marcus. I, uh, y- you know, you can be you can be six feet from the biggest timber rattler in Pennsylvania, and, and you're entirely safe. These these animals don't leave their position and attack you. They're not aggressive towards you. All they want to do is be left alone and go undetected. Right. Um, I believe most snake bites with uh, timber rattlesnakes occur when people are trying to handle them. I think, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I think the demographic, uh, one demographic I read was was young adult males under the influence of alcohol, by the way. Right. That I, helps. Yes. <laughs> right. Now, the timber rattlesnake uh, that we've been looking at in the Harrisburg area, they seem to be moving because of habitat, dis- mm-hmm. habitat disturbance. Mm-hmm. They're moving yeah. out of an area where a development is going in. Um, and the Fish and Boat Commission, we're told, has captured three of them Mm -hmm. and uh, relocated them but if i recall this the scientific literature those snakes don't have a high chance of survival in a relocation situation no they don't well you know and i'm not a scientist but you know i've read probably some of the same stuff you have and relocating almost any kind of a snake is very often a death sentence because you've got a snake that needs a hibernaculum it needs to get below frost line uh, come cold weather, particularly in places like upstate Pennsylvania. Uh, so uh, without knowledge of the area, they need, they need hunting territory that they're familiar with. And a lot of times a relocated snake will line out and you don't have to go far in Pennsylvania uh, before you encounter a road. And those encounters often end badly for the snake. So yeah, relocated snakes, uh, relocating snakes does reduce their chance of survival. But as you pointed out, uh, not relocating them probably reduces their chance to zero if they're in a in a developed area. Right. Not relocating a snake that has been forced probably from its na- from its natural habitat mm-hmm. and is cruising uh, residential neighborhoods. Um, probably zero chance if the right person doesn't get to it first. Correct. Yeah. And snakes don't have a lot of friends. No. The the the. They need a good press agent. They do. <laughs> they really do. And that's why we're here today. Yeah. We're, we're, we're doing some press agentry for snakes. Yeah, well, anything I can do in, in, in that respect, I'm always happy to do. Right. T- tell me this, Jack. Why, when I help a rattlesnake off the road, isn't it grateful? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Marcus, they're evolving pretty slowly. And, uh, you know, how long have they had to get acquainted with cars? A hundred years? Yeah. yeah, and uh, you know, with horse-drawn wagons and whatnot. So, so these are these are ancient animals. They're reptiles, and uh, they're not ever going to see an encounter uh, with a human as something to be grateful for. Right. Um. But then you know, snapping turtles are never happy. Either no, they're you not. Them across no. the road. They're just, nope. Uh, you have to get your own. You have to get a personal satisfaction out of that. You don't get gratitude. No, that's anyhow, right. The t- the timber rattlesnake again. This is a black rat snake. This right, is not yeah. a venomous snake. But right. the timber rattlesnake is one of three venomous snakes in Pennsylvania. Yes. And the other ones are Massasauga and and of course the copperhead, but the Massasauga is is an endangered species, and and they're in in a very few very few viable populations in the state in the western part of the state. You're not going to see one here where we are now in Lebanon County. Uh, so for practical purposes, the, the encounters you're going to have with venomous snakes in Pennsylvania uh, are going to be with copperheads and timber rattlesnakes. And the experts say we've got 21, 22 different species of snakes native to Pennsylvania, three venomous, and one of those endangered. So what are your odds of encountering a, a, a dangerous, a venomous snake in Pennsylvania? Really, really slim. Right. I, I believe the social media environment has a lot of people believing there's much, many, many more of these snakes out there than there actually are. Well, yeah. Most any snake, for instance, that has a pattern uh, is already suspect. Oh, that's a copperhead. That's a northern water snake. The common snake that you're going to find around any stream, river, uh, creek has a has a pattern that and a color that's vaguely similar similar to a copperhead and that's why they often lose their heads uh so uh, patterns and colors are are very confusing to people unless you see a good many snakes it's kind of hard to sort them out right um 
the how can the average person seeing a snake <clears throat> identify if it is a copperhead? <laughs> well, a copperheads, uh, believe it or not, are one of the easiest, if you know the secret. And really, I don't have an illustration here for you, but stick this in your head. The copperhead wears a band. That A band, by that I mean going around the body, not a stripe, but a band. And those bands in copperheads pinch tight as they go up over the spine, and they get wider as they go down the side, and they're shaped like an hourglass or a bow tie. I always tell kids, beware the snake that wears bow ties. The darker coppery band is shaped like an hourglass when you're looking down on the snake. It gets wide as it goes down the sides of the body, and it pinches tight right up over the spine. So it looks like an hourglass. Uh, or a bow tie when you look down on it. Northern water snake is just the opposite. The blotch is widest over the spine. So once you know that, and, and the northern water snake bands get narrower as they go down toward the belly. Once you know that, uh, it's pretty easy to sort the northern water snakes from the copperheads at a safe distance. Right. But as you said, just about anything with a pattern if it gets yeah. too close to the wrong person, is going to buy it. I mean, well, sure. corn You're excited, snakes, right? milk snakes, yeah. uh, immature. Uh, what is there's a there's a black snake that the racer is it the immature? Well, listen. Uh, if you look at this rat snake carefully, uh, black rat snakes aren't black as babies. Okay, and I like this adult snake because you can see the pattern. If you notice, if you, if you look hard, there's a regular pattern, and it's got a black blotch down the spine in the middle here, and then you can see these white bands that are just visible. If you can visualize a newly hatched rat snake, some snakes lay eggs, some live bearing. Rat snake lays eggs, and those little hatchlings are, oh, 10, 11 inches long, big around as a pencil, they have a really well-defined pattern, a light gray with a dark kind of rectangular blotch down the back, alternating. And that's why people look at them and say, that's not a black snake. They're not black as youngsters. And as they age and as they shed, the pattern becomes less distinct. And that's why some of the rat snakes that many of you have seen uh, look almost totally black rather than like this one. And we have, we have another non-venomous snake in uh, Pennsylvania that uh, gets killed because of its habit of uh, fakery defense, and that is the uh, hognose snake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, which attempts everything from playing dead to looking like a cobra when, well, exactly. when it's threatened. Mm -hmm. And they'll initially, uh, they'll rear up, and they have a, a very flexible neck skin that spreads like a hood, as you, as you said, cobra. And they... They hiss loudly. It almost sounds like somebody uh, stuck a nail in a tire. And, of course, the hiss gets you. There's your auditory warning. And then the snake is reared up, and it's, and it's displaying that flattened hood, and it looks like the Pennsylvania Cobra, which, of course, there isn't such a thing. But it's a really impressive display. Now, if you know what you're looking at and you hang around, uh, that snake will eventually go to its final phase. When it can't scare you with the big bluff, it rolls over and dies or plays dead. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's nature's big bluffer in Pennsylvania, the hognose. And I've seen him stop several horses, mounted riders in their tracks on a trail. And the fun, they, they insist on playing dead once they have initiated that. You exactly. can roll them over, and they will flip back over and say, no, I'm really dead. Exactly. Leave me alone. Yeah. I'm really dead. Yep. Watch, I'm on my back. And the tongue comes out? The tongue comes out. I've, I've seen them lying there with a fly on their tongue, walking, around, which is really convincing. But you step back a few yards and step behind a tree and be quiet. And in a few minutes, the snake will right itself and slither away and said, ha, fooled another gullible human being. Okay. But like I said, we're really here to encourage a different attitude towards snakes. Oh, exactly, and yeah. Let's talk for a, a minute or two here about the benefits of snakes in mm. the backyard, in the forest, in, in the park. Well, of course, the benefits, uh, well, you get some clue if you look at this guy's name, the rat snake. Uh, these guys consume rodents at a great rate during the warm months. Of course, in the winter they're brew mating or hibernating. Uh, 
and uh, but during the summer and the spring months they're really hard on rats and mice best rodent control agent you can have it's free of charge uh, and as I say they do kill and eat some birds but that's nature's way so they're great to have around and and the garter snake is going to eat salamanders toads frogs earthworms nothing you want to eat uh, so he's of no economic loss to you uh, Snakes, by and large, are totally harmless to humans. This snake, as long as I am, uh, you would think he'd have a fearsome bite. Uh, he's got tiny teeth. You can hardly see them. And snakes don't have big, powerful jaws like a, like a mammalian predator, like a dog or a cat. These jaws are very flexible. And this snake can actually envelop an entire chicken egg. But that flexibility sacrifices strength. Yeah, so that's why this animal, why he, while he can bite you, uh, it's not a serious bite. You get a series of pinpricks in your hand and just put a little antiseptic on it, and you're absolutely fine. Worst he can do is scare you to half to death. That's it. And um, in the wild, these guys are not aggressive towards us. We're not mm. seen as any, unless we try to handle it or step on it, we're not seen as anything other than a threat that it needs to avoid. No, uh, the, the closest you can probably come to an aggressive snake in Pennsylvania would be a northern water snake. Uh, and uh, they, they, get, they get quite aggressive, and if they're cornered, they're going to bite, bite, bite. But again, the bite is harmless. Uh, nothing to worry about there. Rat snakes, I have approached full-grown adult rat snakes and moving very slowly pick them up without them even striking at me, which is pretty amazing for a, a totally wild animal. Yes. Um, so I, I believe we're just about out of time. Uh, you did bring one other snake. Oh, yeah, I have. Do you want to share? Well, let's, let's take a look at another. one of the, I have two of the more common snakes you're going to see here in Pennsylvania. This is what I like to show to people because this is the eastern garter snake, and, and these guys, you could find one of these in your backyard, too. Uh, one rule of thumb doesn't work in most cases with snakes, patterns, and colors, as I said. But if you see a striped snake in Pennsylvania, you're okay. Uh, we have no venomous snakes that wear stripes. So if you see a, a garter snake, a ribbon snake, a, a queen snake uh, in the, on our waterways, uh, if you see stripes running the length of the body, you're entirely okay. And this little girl here, uh, there's no way she can hurt you if you find her in the garden or the backyard. Uh, sure, she has teeth. And I tell people anything with teeth and jaws can bite. But this is not a dangerous bite for a human. Just let the garter snake go his way and you go yours. And a predator on a lot of pests you don't want oh, around yeah. your backyard. Sure, yeah. It's, uh, garter snakes are nothing but good to have around. And they're exciting to see. And they're startling when you first see them, of course. But nothing to ever be afraid of. We have a, a pair this year that are inhabiting a uh, arborvitae underneath our front uh, windows, right by <laughs> our uh, sidewalk coming into the house. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, we actually have to do a snake patrol around our yard before we mow it because mm. we have a wood lot that leads into our yard and we have garter snakes and ringneck snakes and uh, corn. And I know there's one black rat snake there too. So, but we still have mice, so we need more of these guys, apparently. If you have a, a snake that maybe reminds you of a corn snake, it's probably a milk snake. We don't have You're any right. native corn You're snakes right. here. You're right. Thanks for uh, uh, correcting me on that. A good, You're right. Uh, the, the corn snakes are, are very popular in the pet trade, but they don't occur here in the wild. But the milk snake does look somewhat like it. Right. And uh, have you heard of the whip snake? No, I have. None of those in Pennsylvania. None of those anywhere, right? <laughs> Coach whip snake in the southwest. But in Pennsylvania, we have uh, a thing called a whip snake that supposedly <laughs> oh. uh, wheels, grabs its tail and rolls down a hill. This is, th that's the hoop snake. The hoop snake. Yeah, it's not yeah. The whip snake. Grabs, yes. puts his tail in his mouth and rolls down the hill, and, uh, and that's how he charges you. Yeah, nothing like a hoop snake. In Pennsylvania, or in anywhere, <laughs> or anywhere that I know of, no, right. that's that, true. that would not be a behavior a snake could uh, pull off. I don't think so. Right. So anyhow, this has been Marcus Schneck for PenLive.com with Jack Hubley, uh, and you can learn more about Jack's programs at uh, Jack Hubley. That's J A C K H U B L E Y dot com. Thank you for being with us. You're welcome, Marcus. Thank you, Jack.